Growing tension between these two countries, tension our next guest knows from first-hand experience. Susan Schwab was America's chief trade negotiator from 2006 to 2009 as the USTR. She is currently a strategic advisor at the law firm Mayor Brown and a professor at the University of Maryland. Susan is in Washington this morning. Susan, as far as resolving America's dispute with China goes, is passing a bill like this just about the dumbest thing Congress could do? Uh, not about the dumbest, but clearly one of them. Um, it, it, it clearly doesn't make sense. It's not going to solve the issue. Uh, it's going to divert attention. It could escalate tensions. And while there is a very real problem in terms of China artificially keeping the renminbi low, uh, I just don't happen to think this is the way to go about solving it. Uh, speaking of escalating tensions, is this the first step towards a trade war, in your opinion? I don't think so. I, it, the problem is, you know, this is a signal sending exercise during a political season. So what you're going to have is a lot of members of Congress saying they want to send a signal to China. What they can't determine is what signal is received. There's nothing that happens after this piece of legislation. Uh, goes through the House, or even if it goes through the Senate, or even if it goes into law, nothing happens immediately in terms of U.S. action. Uh, but what's to stop other countries from saying, okay, it's sort of open season for uh, uh, addressing uh, so-called uh, currency uh, you know, manipulation? Uh, there are other countries that believe that the U.S. is manipulating our currency. You know, there, there could be a boomerang effect. The question is, is there a better multi multilateral and quite frankly more effective way of going after the problem that we really have with China but it's not just the US that has that problem with China. Uh, Susan walk us through that boomerang effect idea if you would. What could happen? How could things play out such that we actually here in the United States end up facing a whole list of unintended consequences? Well, the way the legislation is written, it says that the Commerce Department, somebody in the bowels of the Commerce Department can decide what a, quote, true exchange rate should be uh, in a situation uh, where a country is perceived to be or is determined to be manipulating, actively manipulating or have, a, have a, an extreme imbalance in their currency. Uh, and at that point, countervailing duties, anti-subsidy measures can be taken against the imports from that country. Well, an example of the boomerang effect is is continued abuse, use and abuse of anti-dumping and countervailing duty measures by other countries, including China, uh, against U.S. exports. And they're not going to wait around for the Commerce Department uh, to decide, you know, yes, this is the true currency. So, um, one, the Chinese, what the Chinese could do. Two, what other countries could do to us. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, anticipation that over time the U.S. dollar is going to sink in value. Just look at the size of our, you know, the size of our debt burden. When that happens, does that open our exports up to uh, countervailing duties by other countries? Uh, you know, the Brazilian foreign minister was complaining uh, about the value of the real relative to the dollar just yesterday. Uh, who, you know, who are we to determine unilaterally uh, the way to address this? The other thing that I think is is de facto boomerang is this diverts attention from really, really serious issues we have with China, including intellectual property rights, indigenous innovation, market access issues, and we ought to be hammering on those issues. And this sort of diverts attention and looks like uh, somehow we're being protectionist when, in fact, we need to keep China from being protectionist. Uh, Susan, we only have about 30, 40 seconds left. At what point do you think China is prepared to call America's bluff, literally to take action, to slap retaliatory tariffs against America? because retaliatory tariffs, should they be put in place? Well, the point is they're already doing it. Take a look at the action that they took against U.S. poultry exports recently. Um, take a look at the, uh, the, the actions they've taken against U.S. steel, uh, their binational policies. They are already doing it. They're not going to wait around for this to be fully implemented. Uh, they're not necessarily receiving the signals that Congress thinks it's sending. Susan, so good of you to join us this morning. That is Susan Schwab, the former USTR, live with us from our Washington Bureau.